I've always been one of those guys that people seem to count out. You know, me being a smaller guy, <sighs> growing up my whole life, it was one of those things that I kind of took personal. This Once I was at the point where I was focused and, and you know, everything that had happened in my life with my dad. You need to sign. You can't stop, won't stop. I just knew the only person that could stop me was myself. I could sit here and say, you know, the chips were stacked to the sky and I was gonna knock them down. I was born and raised in New Iberia, Louisiana. About 35,000 population, small town. I grew up in the home with my mom and my sister, Venetia. Also had four stepbrothers. My mom was just a hard worker growing up. She was always working two jobs. She was constantly on the move just to provide for me and my sister. And, and it was tough on my mom, but uh, she, she, made, she made it all work. And um, you, know, I, you know, I am the man I am today because of her. As a kid, I grew up without that father figure. My dad went away when I was three years old. He went to jail for a drug charge. Um, ended up getting 25 years. All I knew on that day, uh, my dad was supposed to go in to court and get probation. He left a customer in his chair, you know, why he was doing a haircut. And the courthouse was like two blocks away from his barber shop. The lawyer that he had said, all right, come in. You're going to go sign some papers and uh, you're going to go back to work. He didn't return to work. I kind of had a lot of anger built up leaving elementary, going into middle school, because I just felt that whatever he had done, it was kind of selfish. The letters he would send me, you know, he would always preach, you know, can't stop, won't stop, keep working hard, stuff like that. And me sitting in my room, I had a shoebox with all his letters in it, and I would grab that shoebox, read them, and like just do push-ups out of anger. I was angry because I felt like him not being there kind of made my friends wonder, like, you know, like, where's Deontay's dad? My dad was supposed to be gone for 25 years. With a good behavior, he came home and ate. So when he came back, Mama, well, I know I can't make it up because he was getting ready to be released. He said, but I'm gonna try my best to just be there with them because he can't take back, you know, what's missed. He, he really did came back as a different person. Everything he wanted to change, it was changed. My grandmother had the barbershop waiting for him to come home. I got a chance to see him be himself, you know, in that barbershop. It was so many things that I learned just seeing my dad in a work environment. But at the time, I thought it was not cool to, you know, pick up cigarette buds or sweep hair in the barbershop. But that was his way of showing me the work ethic and instilling in me that, you know, sometimes you got to go through these type of things. That decision for me to, to go to college was pretty easy. I was a mama's boy, but my dad also had an effect on that because he wanted to be around more. They all could come and see me play at McNeese State. You know, the elite speed and the, all the things he had done in high school, um, you knew that was gonna translate over, but he not only uh, plays at a high level, he elevates people around him to play at a high level. He's a, uh, you know, just watch me work, follow me and we'll be okay. And so, um, all those things kind of led us to believe that he was going to be special. We would always talk about him seeing me play that college football game. And he was like, man, I promise I'm going to be to the LSU game. Man, things are about to be like exactly what, what I was planning for. Like my dad's home. I'm never going to lose my dad again. Like this is it. My brother called me. And he said, where are you? And I said, I'm at home. And he said, oh, sis, he said, I, I, I heard something. I don't know if it's true. So I said, what, what, you know, what, what happened? He said, they shot Cliff and I think he's dead. Police responded to a late night call in Iberia Parish yesterday. Witnesses said they saw four men enter Cliff's impressive cuts. They demanded money and one of the men fatally shot 45 year old Clifton Williams Jr the owner of the shop. They say my dad gave him X amount of money and was like, this is all I got. Apparently the guy started beating him with the gun. No, that's not all you got. I don't know what happened if he, he figured out who it was or called him out or said anything or started to fight back, but he was shot. Shot right there behind his chair, you know, doing what he loved. Well, he was laying on the floor. 
I don't want to know. But when I, when I go on back there in the room, they had his chair covered. I just screamed. I just cried. I just cried. I was over there by myself. Talking about a, a guy in the community getting taken away that would give kids free haircuts before, you know, before school would start every year. Everybody in the community go get their hair cut for free. The things he did for the community were, were just second to none. To see him, you know, just laying in that casket. It was tough, man. It was real tough. I didn't want to be here, you know, what it what this had happened. And the only thing that, that was that was there for me to cope with was my teammates. You know, football and, and me knowing what he what he would have wanted me to do. I'm going back and I'm dedicating this game to my dad and I, I had RIP RIP dad on my face. The only thing I ever really remember is just looking across and thinking, you know, I, I can't believe that kid got on the bus. I can't believe he's here and he's getting dressed and he's gonna go play, you know? And so, um, but that's kind of who he was. Once I got on the field, it was just kind of like that safe haven. Like it was just that safe place for me. And he's got Spencer and he's got the 10 and the five and the touchdown Cowboys. Deontay Spencer from 40 yards away. When my dad was murdered, that just made me refocus and made me look at everything in life different. I started approaching each, each and every day as uh, this could be my last. From that day forward, it was just, I want to build the legacy and live and stand by what he stood for and can't stop, won't stop. And that's just something, you know, that's been, that's been my motto ever since. And Deontay Spencer gets it. When I got to the CFL, I was ready to work. The chips, you know, they're stacking a little higher, and I never wanted to, to have that feeling of someone telling me, you know, I, I wasn't good enough. It was just a matter of time of somebody believing in me, of somebody giving me that chance, and, and I, once I got it, I took it and ran with it. Deontay Spencer, his first touchdown as a member of the Ottawa Red Blacks, 96 yard masterpiece. I thought about, you know, what he would have said, just seeing, you know, all of my accomplishments. And that's the record for the most total yards in one CFL game. You know, just hearing the words, you know, come out of his mouth, you know, just, man, I'm proud of you or something like that. Just, you kind of think about those things. And I would often say, well, Cliff, looking down, you know, I would tell D.D., you know, your dad was out there, I know my mom, you know, he was right there just being proud. To see him do it, have the career he had, overcome what he's overcome. Um, honestly, I get choked up just, just thinking about it. Oh, his dad would be so proud of him. So proud of him. You know how they say, if they're happy, you're happy, and to see him live his dream, that's amazing. You know, they see the smile, they see everything going, going good in my life. They see the, the success, and behind all of that, it's still questions, it's still things that I still really don't know. It's been almost eight years since my dad been gone and each and every day I'm learning things about him, you know, that's, that's kind of filling that void. If I could have one more conversation, I wouldn't, I don't think I would say nothing but just to say I, I love you. You know, just I would tell him deep down inside from the bottom of my heart that I love him. That's one thing I, I felt that, you know, I, I didn't do enough of. It wouldn't be more of a conversation, it would just be something that I would want to tell him, you know, I would want to tell him I love him.